All right, so this is a crazy story that just happened this week where a ton of crypto was just stolen, roughly 4,836 Ethereum worth about $15 million plus another 443 Bitcoin worth about $18.6 million, 483 user accounts compromised off of crypto.com. But the kicker ending here is that this stolen money is being laundered right now through a coin mixer called Tornado Cash. And you can see these transactions happening right here in batches of 100. It's like the equivalent of having a deck of cards, right? Imagine this is my money and my crypto and my hand is my wallet. If somebody takes my crypto and puts it into another wallet, I could clearly see that someone transferred it and now it's in the other hand. But using a coin mixer is like the equivalent of stealing this money and then giving it to a robot and the robot's like, Where's my money gone? Now, obviously it's a little bit more complicated than that. So in today's video, I wanna explain exactly how this money could have been stolen, how it's being laundered right now, and how we can protect ourselves. Now, thankfully, Crypto.com made all of their customers whole again. So if you had your money on Crypto.com and it was stolen, by now you should have your money back because fortune favors the brave. Hey, I don't care what anyone says, that Matt Damon commercial was awesome. Minus the quote at the end that they got wrong, but everyone knows it's fortune favors those who smash the like button. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance and stay for the wild west of crypto. So if you've never heard of crypto.com, it's a company based in Singapore, owned by a Maltese company, and they have become one of the biggest companies in crypto of all time. Right now, they have over 300 employees, over 10 million users, and they've expanded to over 90 countries. So they've gone global. And in June of this year, the LA Staples Center, that's the one that's home to the LA Lakers, is going to be renamed to the Crypto.com Arena. They paid over $700 million for the rights to rename it. It's nutty. They also have official deals with the UFC Fight League, with the NBA, with the Philadelphia 76ers, with the NHL, the Montreal Canadiens, the Australian Football League. These deals are huge, reportedly worth something like $1.5 billion. And because I live in Las Vegas, I can attest to this because everywhere I look on some of the biggest billboards and casinos, I see crypto.com. The point is their marketing budget is insane. Now on Monday of this week, crypto.com was, let's just say compromised because people that held Ethereum inside of their accounts started to notice that it was going missing, even though they had two-factor authentication turned on. Someone even tweeted that they had as much as 24 ETH go missing from their account. And that was when, to Crypto.com's credit, they started tweeting that they noticed something unusual was going on, and that's when they locked all withdrawals and all deposits for the next 13 hours to try to figure out what was going on. Then on Tuesday, a company called PeckShield, which is a security company, analyzed that at least 450 Ethereum went missing and was sent to a coin mixer. Then on Wednesday, another security company called OXT Research noticed that at least 444 Bitcoins were stolen and then were sent to a coin tumbler. It was that same Wednesday this week that the CEO of Crypto.com went on Bloomberg to basically acknowledge that there was a hack that took place. He basically said that they were working on a report to tell people what happened and that customer funds were safe and that they were never at risk in the first place and that of the money that was stolen was immaterial which translates to, guys, relax, we have so much money, everything's gonna be fine. Even though the funds inside of crypto.com are not FDIC insured, because they have so much money, they basically returned all of the money to their customers, which is really nice. But the problem is, not every crypto company will be able to do that. So that's what happened. Now let's talk about how it could have happened and how these people are now laundering that money. Here's the thing about laundered or stolen crypto. It's pretty easy to get caught because we can follow that money from one wallet to the next directly on the blockchain. And even if someone had a thousand wallets, we could eventually figure out where the last known wallet was to receive the money and then eventually figure out the identity of who the wallet belongs to. But now though, our coins have been fun, fun, funged. In basic economics, there is this principle of sound or good money. And one of them is something called fungibility, which I've explained before. Fungibility just means that money needs to be the same from one unit of measurement to the next. And in a lot of ways, crypto like Bitcoin and Ethereum have 
not fungible properties because they have unique identifications that they leave behind which we can trace, which is also why the government would love if criminals used crypto because we can trace their transactions. But with tumblers and coin mixers like Tornado Cash, it becomes very difficult, if not impossible, to figure out. Now, this technology is based on something called ZK Snarks. And the way it works is that you take your stolen Ethereum and you deposit it into a smart contract. And this smart contract acts as a liquidity pool for people to withdraw and deposit money into. And a lot of people are using it, which means hundreds, if not thousands of wallets could be withdrawing micro sums of money over a long period of time, which makes it very hard to tell who the thief is. But then it goes even deeper. Tornado Cash uses a secret hash, which is a randomly generated string of letters and numbers anytime someone deposits Ethereum into the smart contract or pool of liquidity. And this is called a commitment. And this is used to identify the person who put money in there so that way the contract knows exactly who to give the money back to. And you can think of this as sort of like your invisible signature that only you can see, but no one else on the blockchain sees. And this kind of thing happens every day in crypto. Anytime you send someone crypto, you you are signing a transaction with your private key. Now, using Tornado Cash is kind of like the same thing where you're signing your name, but this is what happens instead. So you can see my name right here, and then watch, uno, dos, disappears without a tres. But here's where it gets tricky. If I'm on the other end of the line and I'm trying to figure out who the thief is, then it's like the equivalent of taking a random card like this ace of spades, putting it in the deck, and while my eyes are closed, just shuffling the cards all around, and when I open my eyes, I have no idea if the card is still in the deck or if someone stole it. Now you might say to yourself, well then in that case, let's just go find who has the Ace of Spades. So if someone put in 100 ETH, then we should see who withdrew 100 ETH. That way we at least have some suspects. But the problem is that person doesn't have to take the Ace of Spades. They could do this. Now, I wish I could just magically restore it for you, but I'm not that good. But the point is, is that they can withdraw little tiny bits and pieces over a long period of time to as many different wallets as they want, which makes it difficult, if not impossible, to figure out who actually stole it. And the craziest part is that it's so easy, anyone can do it. All it takes is connecting your MetaMask to Tornado Cash, depositing the stolen Ethereum in there, and then just waiting 24 hours before withdrawing again, because the longer you wait, the more it mixes and shuffles and obscures the path of where the money came from. And the craziest part still is that because Tornado Cash is what's called a DAO, a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, it means that authorities can't just come up to the creators and ask them for help because it's decentralized. It's not owned by anyone, it's just running on its own on autopilot. And for the rest of the 440 plus Bitcoins, kind of the same thing happened. They put it into a Bitcoin tumbler where it mixed and shuffled and it sort of distributes the money over a long period of time, microtransactions to as many wallets as they need. It's kind of like that scene in Too Fast, Too Furious where they go inside the garage and the police were waiting for them and then like 50 cars come out and the police was like, I don't know who's what, where, what. Kind of the same idea, except instead of cars coming out, imagine they came out in pieces which makes it impossible to tell which cars were which and who they belong to. And ultimately, this kind of poses the question of how did this happen in the first place if some people even had two-factor authentication turned on? Here's my thoughts. But first, if you're a user of Crypto.com, they just introduced a new security feature called the APP, the Account Protection Program, which is supposed to protect user funds from being stolen or withdrawn on up to $250,000 worth of crypto deposits for qualified users. And this is how you qualify. The first thing you have to do is turn on your MFA, multi-factor authentication on all applicable trades. So if the website ever asks you to turn on some security feature, just please turn it on for the sake of your safety. And the second thing you have to do is turn on your anti-phishing codes. And this is something that has to be turned on at least three weeks before the funds are stolen. The third thing is to make sure you're not using any jailbroken devices. The fourth thing is if your money is in fact stolen, you have to file a police report and then give a copy of that report to crypto.com. And the last thing is that you have to fill out a questionnaire so they can start their forensic investigation, which I'm not sure what that means, but that's one 
of the requirements. Hopefully they can clarify on where we get this questionnaire from, but just so you know, just a heads up, so that way you're protected in the future. Now, as far as who actually did it and how they were able to do it, we don't know yet, but my theory is that whoever was able to gain access to the accounts whitelisted their own wallet address, which allowed them to take the money from those accounts and deposit it into their own. Remember, whitelisting basically signals to the account that we trust this wallet address, and that's what allows them to bypass the entire two-factor authentication process, which is terrifying because that can happen to anyone at any time on any brokerage. So to prevent this stuff from happening in the future, Crypto.com will send out a notification to remind you that somebody just whitelisted a wallet. Now you have 24 hours to cross-reference and make sure that it belongs to you, because if it doesn't, you need to delete it and report it right away. So please turn on all of your notifications and emails. The only other possible explanation is that a rogue employee somehow got access to the accounts and did something sketchy. Either way, that's a reminder that anything can happen at crypto. It's still the wild, wild west out there, so if you keep your coins online in an exchange or on a brokerage, just make sure to update your passwords, turn on your two-factor authentication, and if you want to be 100% safe, then move your coins offline to cold storage, and that's the best thing you can do. Links are down below. But when this stuff happens, the real downside is that we get new crypto regulations, kind of like this one. I won't read the whole thing, but it basically says that the OCC, the board, and FDIC are creating a rule that requires banks to report any kinds of incidents to regulators no later than 36 hours after it happens. And if there's an outage that lasts for more than four hours, that they have to let their customers know. So the next time anything out of the ordinary happens, if you're a bank and you want to play nice with the regulators, you'll have to report it within a certain period of time. But the real downside to all of this is that the people stealing these coins are not just hurting everyone, they're hurting themselves too. Because if you read headlines that say that crypto used in illegal activity and money laundering schemes, it cements this perception that crypto is only used for illegal activities. And that's not true. That's been debunked. If anything, the US dollar is and has always been the number one currency used in money laundering. That can lead to bad regulations that say if your Ethereum has been through a coin mixer, then it's subject to investigation and potentially seizure. And that would create a huge fungibility problem, which would destroy the value of crypto. So that's kind of the catch 22. Not to mention the fact that these coin mixers like Tornado Cash are supposed to be innovative tools that are supposed to solve a problem. The problem of privacy. We want control over our metadata and our browsing history, control over our money. And tools like Tornado Cash at least give us the option to do that, unless they're abused. Because we don't want to have to report every single transaction of $600 or more to the government. That's just annoying and that's not exactly what we want. So when these tools are abused, it gives more power to the government to say, this crypto stuff is a scam. And when it comes to regulations, there are good ways and bad ways to regulate. A better way to do it is to integrate an insurance policy like we insure banks with FDIC insurance, like we insure securities with SIPC insurance. And the crypto equivalent of that would be nice because if we're gonna be expected to pay taxes on our crypto, then there's no reason why we shouldn't be insured. So if you have your money on something like crypto.com and if you were to lose it, then you should be guaranteed to have your money back up to a certain amount. Lucky for customers of crypto.com, they had a lot of money where they could just give that money back because they care about their reputation. But a smaller exchange might not have had the means to do that. So please remember that crypto is still the wild west to so please be careful and to not keep more crypto online than you're willing to lose and just stay safe. As always, don't forget to have a wonderful day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Go grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre. Go get your free stocks, links down below, and then go track them automatically with a spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Sure.